Hey, how's it going guys? JC here and today we have a little bit of a special video. I'm going to be analyzing TF Blade and he is the current rank 1 player on NA. He mains Akali and I'm pretty sure he mainly climbed with Akali to rank 1. So this is going to be a pretty big learning experience for us. Lately he also plays quite a bit of Irelia and Renekton. But mainly Irelia, like so much Irelia. So if this video does really well, make sure you drop that like and that comment to let me know if you guys want to watch analysis of the Irelia gameplay as well. So we'll see how well this video does. So this is just a little bit of a trial. But basically what I'm going to do is cover his runes and masteries, which uh, should be on the screen right about now. I'm going to go over his build and also I'm going to make sure that I go over some of his combos that he used because I watched a few of his videos or his previous past VODs of him playing Akali, so we'll try to find out what makes him rank 1 and hopefully we can learn a thing or two. I know that he's probably the best Akali in the world as of right now, I'd say, at least on NA. I don't know, maybe there's a better Akali in different regions, but who knows. He's probably better than everyone that's watching, including myself, so we're going to learn a lot anyway, so. I picked Ryze because he is a very annoying matchup, at least for me anyway. As a Trinomir player, he is super annoying and really hard to deal with in lane, so we're going to see how well this Akali does in lane against Ryze, so. I'd say some people right now, they're going to say, Akali counters Ryze after 6, and to that I'd say, okay, that could be true, but... Honestly, you could argue that Akali counters almost everybody just because Akali got buffed and she's apparently really really strong right now A lot of people complain about her and there's probably a good reason why she can get to or he can get to rank 1 as Akali You know, so. we're going to find out just exactly what he does or what separates him from regular Akali players And while that's happening, I might just go over his build really quickly. What's worth noting is He goes for AD reds like on this account anyway, he goes for AD reds he goes for attack speed quints, two attack speed quints, one one AP quint as well. So that's the three quints, MR blues and armor yellows. So it's pretty standard, but the only thing different from a Trindamir rune page to say an Akali one is that he throws in one AP quint. Everything else is pretty much the same, minus the cooldown reduction. He also doesn't have that on his page. So after that, I noticed he goes for Thunderlords, and I think for this matchup, he you can see the coins if he misses. If he misses a CS, you'll see a plus one coin, so he went for Bandit, so that's something worth noting. But anyways, you guys will see the exact points in the Mastery Tree that he puts everything in, because I'll probably have that in the video before I even said this part. So the next thing I want to go over is that his build. His build is always going to be roughly the same. I noticed that in his match history, after looking around like 10 to 15 games, they're all pretty much the same. The only situational item that he might throw in is Banshee's Veil. That's it. Other than that, he always goes for Gunblade, always goes for Zonia, and he always goes for Merc Treads. I don't know exactly why he will always go for Merc Treads, even against AD matchups. I think that there might be this one occasion where he went for Swifties because he was snowballing, or maybe if there's absolutely no CC on the enemy team, then he might pick up a Ninja Tabby, but that's very unlikely. So you might, you guys might be asking... Okay, so why does he go for attack speed quints? And to that, I remember him saying that he goes for attack speed quints because his combo relies a lot on attack speed to make it more fluent and to because he needs to auto attack a lot. So it does help with CSing as well, but that's not his words, that's my words. But in terms of weaving in combos, you definitely need that attack speed. Um, so really quickly, after his core items, so his Merc Treads, Gunblade, and Zonias, He'll go for, this is kind of up in the air, so he'll either go for Rhylize, which is like tankiness and extra slow, or he'll go for Haunting Guys into Void Staff, and then he'll finish off the Haunting Guys into a Leandries. After that, he'll pick up a Rhylize, or he might even pick up a Banshee's Veil, so I think maybe he might go for Banshee's Veil this game just because he's up against a Rise, but I'm not sure, we'll find out very soon because I have not watched this clip either. So as you guys can see while I was ranting this whole time that he was really playing defensive and just trying to get CS. So he was just trying to survive lane, get CS as much as possible. And now he's going to start doing the trade. So I can see that his trade is he Qs and then he Ws into melee range, gets an auto off, weaves in and out, gets another Q off and he can either proc that second Q or he can back away, which in this case he chose to back away because that minion wave is crashing into his next one and he has no minions to support him so the only way was to back out or all in and there was no way of all inning that rise with basically that many minions backing rise up 
So, okay, you can actually shroud on the spot when you're binded, that is, so that's something worth noting. The only reason why I say it's worth noting is because since his W actually gives him like a miniature flash, I would think that there's a possibility he could move during bind, but obviously not the case, so he's just going to W on the spot, and he's going to go for an all-in. Uh, so that's really, really beautifully done. Let me just watch that again so I can commentate it better. Okay, so right here we can see that he's just going to farm the minions for a little bit and just give Ryze a false sense of security. He's going to go for the cannon wave first, and, you know, he's going to heal up a little bit from his passive, which is going to be nice. And then he's going to throw one Q, right? And that Q is very important. Because after that, he's going to ult onto him, and then E, auto, and then Q as well, and then ult, auto, E. <laughs> That's quite a mouthful, though. That's quite a mouthful for me to say, but I had to watch that, like, a couple of times before I realized exactly what the combo was, so I could narrate it while it's happening. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. It's basically, if you have a mark on that target, you can ult and then E, and then you'll queue up an auto at the same time. Or he could flash ult, flash ult. Q, E, and that's, that was the other combo, and after that, you know, just face roll the rest, I guess. Ah, uh, no more ult charges, he's not going to be able to catch Rakan. Speaking of which, I'm just going to go over some of the combos that I wrote down. So, okay, so the combo goes like this, he'll Q and they'll back away, then if, depending on how far the enemy is, he'll either W and then ult onto them, or he'll just W and auto, and then he'll use his E. So. You know, W, so you'll get the gap close, auto, and then E. After that, you'll Q, and then you'll auto again, depending on how far they are. But if you can get it off, that's what he'll do. If not, then he'll just ult again, and then proc that proc that mark with a auto attack. So that's that's just basically the gist of it. And let's see what, what's going to happen, because he just got back to lane and slow pushing in. So he autos, he looks like he's CSing, and then he gets a Q off, right? And then he, he uses ult, auto, E, and then he Qs again. And then he jumps to a minion, he didn't proc that second Q. That, that was such a mouthful, and that took a lot of concentration to pay attention to the exact combo, but that was the combo right there. Pretty amazing, and also pretty good gank by Jarvan, so Jarvan actually finished it off. I don't think Akali was going to finish that one off, but I guess he went in because he saw... Ooh. Alt. W. Q. Oh, he's so screwed. <laughs> Jumped to the minion. Yep. Nice. Okay, he juked him out. The Shroud is so good. And... Thankfully, because there was a minion nearby, that's the only way he got out. But to be honest, I think Lucian should have known. Depending on where that shroud was, I think Lucian was thinking that Akali might go into the tri-bush, and that was the main problem. But from maybe the Akali's point of view, that, you know, jumping to a minion was the best idea. So I guess if you get inside the mind of Akali, you'll know to prioritize to go near minions. So say if you were fighting Akali in a random-ass place, like say in the enemy jungle's red buff, and you'll be like, oh, he she shrouded near rave camp, I wonder where she's going to go. There's a good chance that she might actually go towards mid lane because that's the closest that you can see minions fighting. So that's where she'll try to go to get that next dash off onto a minion. So that's kind of something you can do to get inside the mind of an Akali if you're facing against her. And if you're playing her, then you'll want to prioritize minions or anywhere you can go towards minions if that helps out. I think that's, from my analysis, that's what I think. So we get a random Pantheon ult. By the way, guys, did you guys notice that Pantheon has a Doran's ring? I just wanted to say, Pantheon has a Doran's ring and so does Jin. I think this might be just a phase in in this patch right now that people... Like, you can see right now, see? On the screen. Doran's ring on Jin and Doran's ring on Pantheon. And they're doing, like... Pantheon's doing work, like 3 and 1. That's pretty good. I believe Pantheon started Doran's ring too, so... I'm thinking there is no... <laughs> and Dyrus gets the solo kill. There is actually no AP scaling on Pantheon. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that, that Doran's Ring is purely for mana regen purposes. So when you get a CS, you get some mana, and you also get 50% base mana regen. And that might just be a phase in patch 7.16. I think that's patch 7.16 right now. Yeah, I think it's just a phase. So if you're watching this in the future, say if it's a different patch, I probably don't advise getting a Doran's Ring. I think that's just right now, just for the time period of right now that it's maybe meta, but maybe not in the future. So don't get that for Pantheon, guys, unless you're sure or you experimented and you're pretty sure that that's what you're going to bring into rank. But we can see that top lane tower fell, bot lane tower fell, so that's really bad for the Akali right now. Like, there's a lot of carrying to do. There's a lot of work to do to win this one. Akali's in a pretty decent position. She's 3 and 1. But the thing is, she's 57 CS, so it's not great, but she is up in kills, so that is the saving grace. 
The only problem is that right now the enemy has so much map pressure. They have top and they have bot tower. So this game is looking pretty bad in terms of objectives. So we're going to see how Akali does it. From my point of view as a Trindamir, what I would want to do is take Rift Hell very soon and possibly take top tower as well and take Rift Hell to bot lane. That's my strategy anyway. So we're going to see what TF Blade does instead. You know, rank one play, he probably has a better strategy than me. So we'll see. It looks like he's just faking or trying to dive Fiddlesticks, baiting out that fear, and then now he can go all in. So now that there's no fear, maybe Dyrus can tank. Ooh, okay. So that was a ult to a minion W and then ult again, or flash ult. There's so much mobility there though. But I guess that was a big whoops. Maybe Dyrus gave TF Blade a false sense of security, made him go all in. But yeah, you guys can see that that's like the chase combo. So I'll go over the chase combo real quick when enemy's really, really far away. So you will ult to a minion, then you are shroud forward. And then if you can get into them, in this case, he couldn't. So he had to flash and then ult again. But in the case that you once you get to them, you'd want to use your gun blade. So you want to Q gun blade and then ult. Then once you ult into them, you'll queue up a right click on them along with the E. So it will just automatically E auto attack. So you proc that Q and then hopefully you can walk them down or orb walk them down and then use your Q again and then proc your mark again with your auto attack. And that's why it requires so many auto attacks in Akali's combo. So there's a reason why attack speed is so important for Akali is because you're weaving in all these auto attacks. And look, the fact that you buy a cut list means you have 25 AD. So you're investing a lot into AD in terms of items and you're also investing a lot of AD in terms of runes. That's why when I face Akali as a Trindamir, I buy Ninja Tabbies. It's so good against Akali because she does a ton of auto attacks and she has a lot of AD. So definitely early game, she does so much AD damage. I, I'd like to say that she does more AD than AP damage just because of how many autos she's weaving in and her E is full AD damage as well. The only AP is probably her Q, her Q proc damage. Her ultimate I think is like the tiniest bit of damage because that damage got nerfed and then her passive, her second part passive. So I'll just explain the passive real quick for those who do not know. The first auto attack you do will heal you and it will give you a, a buff. So you will see that right above your QWER, you'll have a buff. See right now? Oh, okay, it's gone again. But you guys can see what that icon that pops up, it looks exactly the same as her passive. And once that icon pops up, see it's there again. Okay, it's gone again. But you guys can rewind it and you'll see it. Once that icon is there, your next auto attack will do a lot of damage. And that's the red part of your weapon. It will do a lot of damage. And you, it, that's very essential to one-shotting someone once you have your Q, like your mark up on that target. You want to make sure... Okay, wow. So they're going in. We'll just watch this one. She hasn't procced a single mark until the very end. And last auto charge, or last ultimate charge. So that was really, really clutch, really close. I don't know what made her go for it though. I think it's because Ryze's cooldowns were down and were spent on Crux, and that's why he went all in for that one. So I'm pretty sure that was a W into an ult onto either Crux or Rise. I'd have to rewatch it, but you guys can probably rewatch it and see. He either ulted onto Crux or Rise, one or the other, and then he spent their last two ult charges on Rise himself. And that netted him a kill. So yeah, um, let's go over another combo. Okay, actually we'll watch this one. He's TPing, so he sees action mid, TPs mid. Hmm. Okay, so what I've noticed right now is that he hasn't taken top tower yet. I don't think he's going for rift tower. I think this might be just more of an Akali kind of playstyle, which is just a hunt for kills, which could actually work out because Akali's so strong right now. Uh, Dyrus just suicided. Yeah, this is looking pretty rough. Oh, <laughs> that rise teleport though. That might be a death pantheon. Oh, rip. This is looking really rough. So I think I think Akali has to carry really hard to win this one. So I'm actually really curious myself how he's going to do it. Like Rift Herald's going to despawn in four minutes. And I don't think Akali can solo Rift Herald efficiently anyway. Like he's going to lose a lot of health. But then again, he does have Gunblade. So it is very possible. The last all-in combo that is worth noting. I think I already mentioned the lane combo. For those who do not know, it's just Q back away and then you'll wait for your Q cooldown and then you go all in with your gap closer of W, ults and E. Uh, the general combo for Akali is once you have your mark up, you always want to ult and then you want to Q up a right click and an E. So that way you'll proc your mark and get the E damage off. 
and then the rest is up in the air. You could use your W or you can just keep orb walking them down. And what orb walking, for those who do not know, is when you auto attack and then right click to move to position yourself into them while you're waiting for your next auto attack. So that's orb walking. Okay, so he clears the minions and then backs away. Then he shrouds and then like kind of jumps rise. I don't know, like a surprise attack. Backs away and then ults back in. Pretty nice, pretty clean. Oh, and even flashes that Rakan flash W. That's pretty fast reactions. That's pretty good. To be fair, there wasn't too much happening, so it was very telegraphed that Rakan flash W, but that was still pretty good, you know? Like, if you're half asleep, you probably wouldn't pay attention to that one, and you'll get knocked up by Rakan. Actually, he's going to get a tower now, so that's actually really important. That would be the second tower that his team got, so making progress here. And he's also 6-2, and two, so I think his whole team is not doing so well except for Pantheon and himself. And the fact that he was doing so well against a Ryze is pretty good. I'd say it's pretty good because, uh, you know, I just can't stand Ryze. And he just does so much damage. So I think he might be responding to the mid lane fight or... Okay, he's going to get red first before he paths down there. So we're going to see what he does after he gets red. Or what does he do with red? Is he going to go kill Ryze or is he going to... Yeah, he's going to go... He's going to keep farming. That's an interesting decision. But I guess because Baron's not up and... There's absolutely nothing left for him to do because his whole team just died. Wow, three kills right there. That is just luck. That's pure luck, though. Okay, what is he going to do? Kill Fiddlesticks as well? Oh, Q. So he used W. Q auto and then ult. And then he uses his E again on Rakan. Autos and gets a kill. Oh, that was a good try. So that last combo there, right before he died to rise, was he used his Q and then ult, and then he tried to use his E and auto attack. So I guess once you get these combos down, these situational combos, because Akali's combos are very situational, like they, they revolve around roughly the same thing, but they do change in order depending on each situation. I think the last one is like a surprise combo when you are uh, just out of nowhere, you jump on them, and this is usually like in lane when you're just laning and nothing's happening. This is a combo I saw in a different video and that was when he just basically was CSing, the enemy was just doing his own thing and then she'll just suddenly ult and then Q at the same time. So you'll see like Akali's Q fly over along with her onto the enemy and then what happens is she'll W to weave in and out, obviously proc that Q, weave in and out with her W, and then she'll prep another Q, and then ult Q up and auto attack with an E, and then that'll just be like a devastating combo. And during that time while you're weaving in and out of invis in your shroud, you can also proc your passive. So what you can do is, if your passive is off of cooldown, you can auto either the enemy champion, or if you're f far enough from them, then you can uh, proc it on a minion, and then you'll have your buff, and then you can just do that all in one shot combo. Oh wow, I missed out on that team fight, but you guys probably saw it. It was a really big mess. But yeah, I'm hoping that these combos that I'm mentioning are worth noting. And I'll probably have something on the screen to make it clearer so that you guys could see it better. Instead of just me saying all these combos that really sound confusing. But I'll probably illustrate it a little bit more so that it looks clearer for you guys to pick up on. So somehow... That team fight went really, really well. I think I want to break down that team fight, so we're just going to go back real quick, and then I'll see what the team fight is and how it turned out so well. Okay, so everyone's hiding. This place has been scanned, and the enemy doesn't know anything. That's a beautiful bubble. Akali goes in, shrouds, and then just you know waits there for a bit, and then just starts hammering down on everybody. So it's just really Q alt, and then auto attack E Q alt auto attack E. So you just repeat that combo in your head and then you'll know. Otherwise you're just waiting in the shroud. So that team fight went so well but I think it was because of like a bunch of factors including like a lot of AoE damage. The enemy just basically face check with no vision and that was just a really big mistake on the enemy's part. I feel like that was more of a mistake rather than his team playing super well but that Nami bubble was really good. And that engage was really hyphy, but I feel like it was a very calculated engage just because Akali had Shroud and he also had his Zonias. Now after Zonias, that Shroud will come back again. It's a really, really short cooldown. You guys can see it very soon just how short it is. So from what I can tell, Akali's W, her Shroud, basically lasts 8 seconds and has a 18 second cooldown. 
And because she has like 20% cooldown reduction from Zonia's and from blue buff, it lowers down to about 15 seconds, which is what I saw in the team fight. And what happens is during that time, eight seconds in, so basically you will be sitting in the shroud the whole time. And then eight seconds later, it will be like a seven second cooldown left on shroud. Well, let's just watch this team fight. Oh, this is so snowballed. Enemy just keeps getting caught out, so that's uh, interesting. I guess Akali has a lot of catch potential as well. Once the Shroud is gone, there's only about 8 seconds or 7 seconds left on the Shroud cooldown, and then you can Zonya's for another like 2 or 3 seconds, and then after that, your Shroud will be back very soon. So you can always juke around with your ult while that's happening, and that's what gives Akali so much survivability, is after that, you have another Shroud again. So it's really hard to kill Akali. Also, because Pink War does not reveal Akali, there's... No way of revealing unless like you're a select few champions like Lee Sin will have to land his Q because Lee Sin's E no longer reveals Akali either. So that's another indirect Akali buff. So yeah, it's really, really strong, that Shroud. Oh my. That's a good flash, but it's not enough. Jesus, that damage though. Can we just quickly... I think you guys want to know this. Like, let's just quickly see what combo she used on Zaya. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and watch an instant replay of this team fight. So it goes in Alt E. And then Q Auto. Q Auto, there we go. And then Alt E again. Alt E. Yep, there we go. And then after that, it gets charmed. And then it'll Alt E. And then Q Auto. And then Jin finishes it off. So that was the team fight right there. So for those of you who are um, starting to see this pattern is basically he will always use his ult and then he will always use his E right after that. So Q those two up and then you can use whatever. You can use your W or you can use your Q. Normally if he's going aggressive, he uses Q right away. If he's not, then he'll use his W. And normally you have a, a Q lined up with your ult if you're going in for an all-in for a full-on damage. But if not, if it's just a really quick one, then you just go for your ult E. Or you can even go Gunblade ult E. So those are the combos you can go for. The other combo for maximum damage and without any setup is to go for Q, Gunblade, ult, and then E with the auto attack. That's a mouthful. Hopefully you guys um, can see it based on basically what you're seeing and not just me narrating, but you guys can see what he's doing as well. So hopefully this is helpful. For those of you who are learning, that is. I think the combo is very important if you are learning Akali or learning how to play Akali, like what combos to use in what situations. I guess I list a bunch of them down, but I don't have all of them. But yeah, guys, I think in lane, what you want to do is focus on your passive a lot because your passive guarantees that you can do massive amounts of damage. And in order to maximize that, you just have to hit one lane minion. And once you have that buff that I spoke about earlier, then you can go for your all-in combo because you can proc your mark and your passive damage and it just deals so much. Okay, so yeah, that's the combo that I keep talking about is it had a W at the start. So W and then ult with Gunblade and then he'll use his E. So ult E. Always use your ult and your E and then after that you use your Q and then auto. And that's about it. That was the combo that just one-shotted the one-shotted fiddlesticks. So he's going to use the exact same combo again. It's always ult and E. And then Q. Ult E Q. Can Shroud away from that. Very nice. So... You know, maybe one day we'll all become Akali one tricks because we now know the combo. We also know the build and the masteries. Make sure you have that attack speed because that's probably the most important component out of the whole mastery page or the whole rune page that is the most important is attack speed. That's how he can weave in these combos so fluently. You guys can quickly see that auto attacks are super important in his combos. Without it, he's not going to be able to do that much damage at that short amount of time. Or at least it'll be harder. Ooh, it's going for it. Didn't work out, but Jarvan's there to clean up. <laughs> I think I think Dyrus is dead here. Oh, Nami's here to save the day. Uh, that Fiddlesticks just backed off completely. Okay, now he's back in with Flash this time. This is just a clown fiesta right here. Like a miniature ARAM at bot lane. Oh, Pantheon's here to save the day. The Doran's ring Pantheon. 
Oh wait, he sold it. Never mind. <laughs> he finally sells his Dark Seal, and his last item will probably be a Void Stuff. He's hovering over Rabadons, but I'm pretty sure it's a Void Stuff because I never see him build Rabadons in all his match history. It's always a Void Stuff, so I'm pretty sure this is actually very consistent to what I've been saying to you guys about his build. And the only variation is if he goes for a Banshee's Veil. Do you know what? All of this is centered around crowd control. So do you guys see how he has he has Merc Treads, right? That's reduced crowd control. Banshee's Veil, that also, you know, eats up a spell and reduces crowd control, potentially. Not always. And then you have Zonias, which also lets you avoid stuff or makes you lets you survive longer. And, you know, syner synergizes really well with your W. You have Rylize, which is going to help out a lot as well in terms of them not being able to kite you. The moment you ult onto them, you have that Rylize slow. It's a single target spell because it's the ultimate single target. And that's going to apply that slow, like maximum slow. So everything synergizes so well in that kit. And I feel like that is actually the optimal build to go, at least. Like, it's enough to reach rank 1, so it's gonna work for every elo. Akali's just such a snowball champion, but I think requires some sort of lead to get ahead. And his mechanics is just so good that he's able to get ahead, even in rough matchups like against Ryze. Although, granted, he did get a little bit of help from Jarvan as well during laning phase, which allowed him to force fights. So another thing I noticed is in lane, even though Jarvan walks up, he was the one initiating because he's Akali. He was able to force that and make that gank work so well and so quickly because he engaged himself and he is able to do so much damage that all Jarvan has to do is press ultimate and that's enough damage to kill or even just EQ. So that's something I noticed is he makes his jungler's job really easy when they just walk into lane because Akali will engage right away. He will engage and then he'll store with his W. That's what I noticed. He can weave in and out of tower with W because W is like a miniature flash. So I think right now it's just a matter of cleaning up, getting the side objectives and then pushing side lanes or pushing together. Okay, so Pantheon's going to split mid, which is, I mean, it's very viable, but looks like he's just going to go back because he has teleport, so he, he's pinging his team that he has teleport. He's going to go back and split push top and make sure that he has teleport ready for if a team fight was to happen at bot lane. Pantheon's splitting mid, which is also smart because Pantheon has ultimate as well, so both of them can reach team fights whenever they want. That works out pretty well anyway. Also, Akali can just farm up, get really strong, don't have to stand there and do nothing, you know, unless there's a fight happening, then he might TP, but there's no hard commitment here. Nami just flashed away, so if he was to TP, it would just be hard forcing a fight that's not going to happen. So you want to make sure you TP when the fight is committed, like it's going to happen. If Pantheon jumps in with his W, then that's probably a hard commit. That's just an example. Or it could be Fiddlesticks ulting and flashing in and getting fear, but that's situational if the, your team can get away. Wow, that's some crazy combo. It ends here. Uh, oh, the outplays? <gasps> wow. Guys, I think we all... I'm going to do us all a favor and just do an instant replay here. I know there's already been quite a few, but uh, this one's worthwhile. Okay, so let's watch this dive. Alt, Gunblade, EQ, Auto. Alt, EQ, Auto. So when Lucian comes, that's a Alt, EQ, Auto, and then Zonyas. And then after that, it's a Alt... Well, it's a Q, Alt, and then Auto Attack. So that was pretty fast, and I had to watch that a couple of times to get each of it down. So that's another combo for you guys, a fast combo. Especially one where in clutch situations, once you get out of Zonias, you want to use your W, and then you hide in the Shroud, then Q, Alt, and the Auto. That's for maximum burst if you have no health. He's also going to teleport, and he has so much health because Gunblade just heals so much. So he gets to do another dive and he gets to help out. So he kills two people at top and then goes to bottom with teleport and then finishes it off. So uh, pretty insane mechanics, but I guess that takes a lot of practice. It's also very possible with Akali because she can turn fights around. She can do like 1v2s really easily, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys in terms of learning how to play against her or playing her, Akali that is, and maybe even getting higher elo with her. Let me know if you guys want me to make a Irelia one uh, of TF Blade playing. And thank you so much for watching to the very end. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.